In 2025, Australia is facing a fiscal nightmare. It has been seven years of engineering chaos, and the nation has now torched over $120 billion on just seven mega projects with absolutely no end in sight. That figure is more than double the country's entire annual defence budget. These construction sites are losing battles against the continent itself. We are fighting toxic soil, flooding plains, and mountains that crush machines like soda cans. We aren't just talking about delays, we are talking about tunnels where the ground turns to soup and traps massive drills for months, and bridges being built over dry land because the floods are coming. Which of these seven giants is actually going to finish, and which one is draining your tax dollars into a bottomless pit? 1. Torrens to Darlington, T2D Adelaide is currently undertaking the most challenging type of construction known to engineers. Excavating a massive hole directly beneath a living, breathing city without disrupting it. The River Torrens to Darlington, T2D, project is the final piece of a 78-kilometre non-stop motorway, but finishing it requires burying the road deep underground. The cost has hit $15.4 billion, making it the biggest infrastructure spend in South Australian history. The real star of this show in 2025 isn't the road, but the monsters building it. Engineers have ordered three colossal tunnel boring machines, TBMs. Each one is 100 metres long and has a cut-ahead diameter of 15 metres. To picture that, look at a five-storey building. That is how tall the face of this drill is. The main drive unit alone, which spins the cutter head, weighs 370 tonnes. Moving pieces this heavy from the port to the construction site required shutting down traffic and using special trailers with hundreds of wheels to spread the weight so they didn't crush the road surface. The ground here is the enemy. Unlike Sydney's hard sandstone, Adelaide sits on stiff clay and sand that can swell when wet and shrink when dry. It is like digging through hard Play-Doh. If the machine pushes too hard, the ground above heaves up, cracking houses. If it doesn't push back enough against the earth, the ground sinks. To stop the suburbs of Clavelli Park from collapsing into the tunnel, these TBMs use a closed-loop slurry system. They pump a thick liquid called bentonite into the front of the drill to hold the earth back while the cutter head chews through it. Before the drills could even start, workers had to build a launch box 35 metres deep. They used a technique called diaphragm walling, where they dig a deep trench, fill it with concrete, and then dig out the dirt in the middle. This creates a concrete box underground that acts as a starting block for the TBMs to push off against. However, while Adelaide is concerned about what is happening beneath their homes, in the mountains of New South Wales, engineers are dealing with a machine that has stopped moving entirely. 2. Snowy Hydro 2.0 Snowy Hydro 2.0 was supposed to be a $2 billion battery for the nation, pumping water uphill to store energy. In 2025, the price tag is looking more like $20 billion, and the completion date has slipped to December 2028. The reason for the delay is a machine named Florence. This 143-metre-long TBM was drilling a 17-kilometre tunnel when it hit something the geologists didn't expect. Instead of hard rock, it hit soft, wet ground that acted like quicksand. The earth collapsed around the front of the machine, trapping it. Because Florence is designed to grip onto hard rock walls to push itself forward, it couldn't move in the soft soup. It sat stuck for months. Workers had to switch to hand mining, using high-pressure water jets to carefully wash away the rock and installing special grout to freeze the ground just to get it moving again. While Florence was stuck, another machine named Kirsten has been doing something even crazier. It is drilling the inclined pressure shaft. This is a tunnel that goes up at a steep 25-degree angle for 1.6 kilometers. Gravity wants to pull the 2,000-ton machine back down the hole. To stop this, Kirsten has special anti-rollback brakes that bite into the rock walls. It is lining the tunnel with concrete segments designed to hold back water pressure 
that will drop 700 meters from the upper dam. That is enough pressure to crush a submarine. The project is now so far behind that they had to order a fourth TBM just to try and catch up. They are racing to finish because without this battery, Australia's wind and solar farms won't have a backup when the wind stops blowing. But water isn't just a problem when it's in a tunnel. Sometimes you have to build a railway right through the middle of an inland sea. 3. Inland Rail Moving north to Queensland, the Inland Rail project is facing a battle against floodwaters. This $31.4 billion project is building a 1,600-kilometre freight line from Melbourne to Brisbane, so giant double-stack trains can make the trip in under 24 hours. The trains will be 1.8 kilometres long and carry containers stacked 7.1 metres high. The engineering headache here is the Condamine floodplain. This is a massive area of flat farmland that turns into an ocean during heavy rain. Farmers were terrified that a normal train line built on a pile of dirt would act like a dam, blocking the water and flooding their farms even worse. The solution is something engineers call hydraulic transparency. Instead of a solid wall of dirt, they are building a massive system of bridges and culverts. In just one six-kilometre section, they are installing five huge bridges and over 500 concrete tunnels under the track. It is like building a bridge over dry land, just in case it gets wet. They have to drive concrete piles deep into the soft soil to make sure the heavy freight trains don't sink when the ground gets soggy. Despite all this engineering, the project is basically stuck in the north. The Queensland section is years behind schedule because of these design arguments and cost blowouts. While the tracks are being laid quickly in Victoria and New South Wales, the connection to Brisbane is still a mess of paperwork and environmental studies. A train line is useless if it doesn't reach the end, but at least the inland rail is out in the open. In Brisbane, they are trying to fix a rail bottleneck by digging the deepest hole the city has ever seen. 4. Cross River Rail Brisbane's Cross River Rail was promised to cost $5.4 billion. In 2025, the government admitted the real cost is over $17 billion. This project is a 10.2-kilometre new rail line that includes 5.9 kilometres of twin tunnels under the Brisbane River and CBD. The goal is to unclog the only bridge that currently carries trains across the river. The physical engineering is incredibly impressive. The new Albert Street station required excavating a cavern 50 metres below the street. That is the deepest hole ever dug in Brisbane. The rock there is called Brisbane Tough, which is hard volcanic rock. To stop the 50 metre high walls from caving in on the workers, they installed 340 rock anchors and sprayed 4,500 cubic metres of concrete onto the walls. They also had to lower massive steel beams, each weighing 50 tonnes, into the hole to prop the walls apart. But the tunnels are finished. The reason the trains won't carry passengers until 2029 is invisible. It is the software. Cross River Rail is installing a new high-tech signalling system called ETCS Level 2. This system lets the trains talk to a central computer to know exactly where they are, allowing them to run closer together safely. The problem is making this new digital system work with the old-fashioned analog system that runs the rest of the Queensland rail network. It is an integration nightmare. If the computer glitches, a train moving at 80 kilometers per hour could disappear from the control screen. Testing this software takes years, not months. On top of that, the project has lost over 140 days to strikes and union disputes, blowing the budget out even further. Here is a question for you guys. Do you think spending $17 billion on one rail line is worth it for a faster commute? Or is the money being wasted? Let me know in the comments. While Brisbane fights with software bugs, Melbourne is fighting a toxic chemical that almost stopped a tunnel permanently. 5. Westgate Tunnel 
Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel is finally set to open in late 2025, years late and billions over budget at $12 billion. This project was built to give trucks a second way to cross the river, so they stop clogging up the Westgate Bridge. It includes twin tunnels. One is 4 kilometers long and the other is 2.8 kilometers. The project almost died because of dirt. When the TBMs started digging, they found the soil was full of PFAS. These are forever chemicals used in old firefighting foams that don't break down. No landfill in Victoria would accept the poisonous dirt. The massive TBMs had to sit idle underground for over a year while the government and the builders fought over who would pay to clean it up. They eventually had to build a special facility just to treat the soil and store it in double-lined containers so the chemicals couldn't leak out. Now that the digging is done, the focus is on the Velaway. This is a 2.5-kilometre cycling superhighway suspended in the air. It hangs underneath the new elevated road above Footscray Road. It is basically a tunnel for bikes made of green mesh that keeps cyclists away from the cars and trucks. But there is still anger in the community. The tunnel has massive ventilation stacks to let out the exhaust fumes from the cars underground. Residents are furious because the government decided not to put filters on these stacks. They rely on the wind to blow the pollution away, which locals think is dangerous for their health. As the Westgate finishes up, an even bigger road project in Melbourne is just getting started, using machines that make the Westgate drills look small. 6. Northeast Link The Northeast Link is the biggest road project in Victoria's history costing a staggering $26.1 billion. It will finally connect the M80 Ring Road to the Eastern Freeway, completing the loop around Melbourne. In 2025, this project is in the most exciting phase, peak tunnelling. They are using two absolute giants named Zelda and Gillian. These TBMs have a diameter of 15.6 metres, making them slightly bigger than the ones in Adelaide and some of the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. Each machine is 90 metres long and weighs 4,000 tonnes. These machines are like underground factories. As the cutter head at the front grinds the rock, the machine automatically places huge curved concrete segments behind it to build the tunnel walls. These concrete rings are made in a factory in Benalla and trucked down. In 2025, Zelda and Gillian have passed the halfway mark of their 6.5-kilometer journey. The logistics are mind-blowing. The machines chew through thousands of tons of rock every day. This rock is moved out of the tunnel on a covered conveyor belt, so it doesn't create dust clouds in the suburbs, and then it is loaded onto trucks. They are digging up to 45 meters deep to go under the Yarra River and existing neighborhoods. Unlike the Westgate, they haven't hit toxic soil yet, but they have to be extremely careful not to disturb the ground under people's homes. One wrong move with the pressure balance and you get sinkholes like the ones that swallowed a building site in Sydney on the M6 project. 7. Western Sydney International Airport While other projects are stuck in the mud, the new Western Sydney International Airport is racing toward the finish line. This is a $5.3 billion project to build a second airport for Sydney at Badgeries Creek. The big selling point? It will operate 24 hours a day, unlike the main Sydney airport, which shuts down at night because of noise. By late 2025, the runway is paved and ready. This isn't just a strip of asphalt. It is a 3.7-kilometer engineering marvel designed for the heaviest planes in the world. It comes with a CAT-3B landing system. This is super advanced technology that uses radio signals to guide planes down, even when the fog is so thick the pilots can't see the ground until they are 50 feet above it. This means the airport won't have to close during bad weather. The terminal roof is now complete and it is a beast of a structure. It uses over 40 kilometers of Australian-made steel beams and weighs 3,500 tons. The roof is designed to float over the terminal without lots of columns blocking the view. 
it will also hold 6,000 solar panels to power the building. The pressure is on to finish the testing. They are currently doing ORAT trials, operational readiness and airport transfer. This involves running thousands of fake passengers and bags through the system to make sure nothing breaks. The airport is on track to open in late 2026, but there is one catch. The metro train line to get people there is racing the clock to be ready at the same time. If the train isn't ready, would you still drive all the way out to Western Sydney to catch a flight? Tell me below. If you want to keep tracking these monsters as they race to the finish line, smash that like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.